Good morning, everyone. I'm Kevin Poplowski. I'm a parishioner here at Our Lady of Assumption. And this morning, we're going to talk about uh, a book I wrote called Together, Living Life During COVID-19. Just a little background on the book. Um, I wrote it with a friend of mine, uh, Michael Rausch. He oh. is an illustrator. He is an illustrator uh, up in Pennsylvania. I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia. And we have written two, uh, three children's books together. Uh, the first two were about these animals that play basketball and teaches lessons about determination and hard work and teamwork. And then when we had this opportunity uh, for the Emory Global Health Institute, they had a contest of, can you design a children's picture book to be able to ease kids' fears and calm them and have them understand what is going on through all this quarantine uh, and, and through all the disease process and and how can kids, one, understand what's going on, two, be enlightened to things they can do, and finally, you'll see at the end of the book how kids can be empowered to be able to help out in these situations. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to listen to the story of Together Living Life During COVID-19. Uh, I wrote the words to it. I'm the author, and then Michael Rausch uh, is the illustrator. I should also say that my wife was my uh, ruthless editor for this book, and uh, so she's, she was a big help in writing the words as well. So, uh, so this is Together, Living Life During COVID-19. Olivia opened her eyes and looked at the clock on the nightstand. Yikes! It was after 7 o'clock. She should already be on her way to school. She dashed downstairs but stopped suddenly when she saw her mom and dad watching the news. Her dad turned around and looked Olivia in the eyes. Olivia... There's no school today, sweetheart. Woohoo! she exclaimed. She thought for a moment. Wait, why? Well, honey, there probably won't be any school for a little while. There's a new virus called the coronavirus that is making a lot of people sick. Well, what's a coronavirus, Olivia asked. That's a funny name. Her dad replied, well, corona actually means crown. Olivia interrupted. Wait, like a princess's crown? Her dad laughed. Well, yes, the virus looks like a princess's crown. Some people just get a little sick and some people get very sick and have a hard time breathing. If that happens, they go to the hospital so that doctors, nurses, and respiratory therapists, like your Aunt Kathy, can help them. And there's a picture of that mean coronavirus there. That's what Olivia's thinking about because she doesn't know what it is. This all made Olivia feel sad and she started to cry. It's important right now to stay home so we can prevent a lot of people from getting sick at the same time, her dad said, putting his arm around her. He thought for a moment, but you know what? There are so many different things that we can do when we're home together. Olivia was starting to get excited, but asked, well, don't you have to go to work? Nope, I have to stay home too. We all have to protect ourselves so there's less chance that we spread the virus. And here's Olivia thinking about all the fun things they can do with crayons and puzzles and blocks and books. Let's see what they come up with. Sweetheart, her dad said, how about we have a chat with your Aunt Kathy on the computer? Olivia was scared about what was going on in the hospital and thought Aunt Kathy could help her to feel better. Aunt Kathy explained how covering her mouth and nose with a mask, wearing special goggles to cover her eyes, and a gown to cover her clothes helped to keep her safe in the hospital. She also washes her hands a lot. And I also heard that Aunt Kathy, when she coughs, she coughs into her <coughs> arm like that. And there they are in the hospital, just like that. Olivia was frustrated she couldn't go to her friend's house or see them at school. Instead, they connected through a computer chat to sing karaoke, and then they played dress up together. Bet you some of you guys have done that. Olivia and her mom went for a walk in the neighborhood. Olivia noticed a stuffed bear in a window. Mom, why is there a stuffed bear in Mrs. Beasley's window? Olivia asked. Oh, that's a fun game to play. Let's see how many bears we can spot on our walk today, her mom said. So there they were. They, they saw the bear in the window, and that's a, that was a sign of, of help or, or a sign of... Uh, comfort for kids that they could see these bears and and people were being very supportive and they were on a very special walk today let's see where they went to together they delivered groceries to her grandma who lived down the street and there they were they were being what we call socially distant from her grandmother there's a the grandmother in the window and she's smiling 
She looks so happy because there's Olivia and her mom coming to visit. She wrote her a sign and she brought her some groceries. And so what she did, she left those groceries on the front porch for grandma and then grandma could come out and get them afterwards. And that's what we call being safe. Olivia was overwhelmed with all that was going on but wanted to help. Mom, when I was talking to Aunt Kathy last week, she told me about all the amazing doctors, nurses, housekeepers, and even cooks in the hospital who make all the patients feel better and keep everyone safe. I want to write them thank you notes, Olivia said. Her mom said proudly, Olivia, that's a wonderful idea. She also left bottles of water out for the sanitation workers and mailmen with a message that said, we appreciate you. So there's Olivia being enlightened on how she can help out uh, writing thank you notes. And that made them feel better and made the people that were keeping us safe feel appreciated. Later, her dad noticed a worried look on Olivia's face. What's wrong, sweetheart? Olivia said, Dad, what if my school isn't there anymore? I miss being with my friends and teachers. I'm worried. Her dad said, sweetheart, let's go for a ride. They drove by Olivia's school, by their family's church, and by their favorite breakfast spot. They saw other cars, people walking, trees, and buildings. They saw the helpers that keep us safe. Olivia smiled and felt reassured by seeing these familiar things. And there they were driving around. And they saw all their favorite spots. You see, kids might not realize that things are still going on out in the world. And because they're in a quarantine, they might not realize that, you know, things are still... that. Things aren't existing out there, and they need to see them to believe them. When they got back home, Olivia said, I feel better, but what if this comes back again next year? Her dad said, well, honey, there are a lot of people working very hard to make medicine to keep people from getting this virus. It's called a vaccine. Olivia lowered her head and said, does that mean another shot? Her dad said, yep, just like the flu shot we get every year. Okay, now it's time to tackle your math homework, kiddo. Look at there she is getting her flu shot, and she, you can see she's having a big lollipop. Isn't that what happens when you get a shot? Yeah, but it's what keeps us safe. She gave her dad a hug and ran off to her room. She came back with two scarves and handed them to her dad. Here, Dad, I've got two masks for you and Mom to use to keep you safe. And there's Olivia giving the scarves to her dad. So, and see, that's what I'm talking about when I say kids get empowered. They really think of how they can help out. And Olivia had the idea. She goes, I know how I can help. I'm going to make you a mask so you could be safe from all these germs and this virus out there. And that's the end of the story. So I hope you enjoy the story. Now, one, one fun thing that we wanted to do with this book is we not only wanted to tell a story of how a child is seeing things through her eyes during this quarantine and this coronavirus, but we also wanted to teach how can we learn from this, learn why we're doing these things. So my illustrator, Michael Roush, came up with all these little blocks on each page. And each block has a little information or a little activity that you can do with your children. So let's go through a couple of them. The first block here was on the first page, and it explains what the coronavirus is. They're common human and animal viruses. And the name of this specific virus is COVID-19. And COVID, C-O-V-I-D-19, comes from Coronavirus Disease 2019. So the letters come from the words. It's a new type of coronavirus that was previously not detected in humans before 2019. It is also considered a pandemic, which, is, which means it is making a lot of people sick. On the next page, we see our next block. Symptoms of COVID-19 may include fever, cough, shortness of breath, which is t difficulty breathing, chills, muscle aches, not being able to smell or taste, headaches, and sore throats. The virus is spread when people cough or sneeze and through touching other people or surfaces, such as phones and doorknobs. To slow down the spread of the virus, doctors want everyone to stay home for a while. And that's what we've all been doing, right? That's what we call the quarantine. We've been staying home. And when we do go out, we're staying six feet away from people. We call that social distancing. And that's to keep everybody safe from each other so we don't spread the virus to people that we love and care about. So let's look at another page here. One of my favorites. When they went for the bear, uh, when they went for the bear hunt in the, in, the, uh, in the neighborhood. Many communities are showing support for one another in very creative ways, such as bear hunts, scavenger hunts, and positive sidewalk chalk messages. 
What are some ways that you have seen support in your community? Well, let me tell you, some ways I've seen support is there are some people who take pictures called photographers and they've come around to different neighborhoods and what they've done is they've taken pictures of people for a donation and they're taking that donation, giving it to local restaurants and those restaurants are providing food for hospital workers, police departments and things like that. And that's a great way that we can show support. We're helping local businesses and helping the people that are keeping us safe. And another way that people have, I've seen is support is people have had birthdays through all of this, like myself. And what happens is, you know, we can't get together for birthdays during this time. And so people have been so great about driving around with messages and, and honking horns and, um, and balloons and just driving by and waving and showing support and singing happy birthday from a distance to show support for people who have birthdays. And kids really love that. They love having that attention. And that's ways that I've seen that, that people have shown support. Um, you know, if we look at the picture of her grandmother, older people are getting, are at a higher risk of getting sick, sicker if they get this virus. So we must maintain social distance to protect them. What are some other ways we can help the elderly? We saw Olivia taking groceries to her grandmother right and so we can look for people in the community uh, who may not um, be able to get out and get groceries or anything like that um, also a friend of mine mentioned that she's deaf and she's having trouble understanding people through um, the mask because she reads lips so maybe if we see people struggling a little bit we kind of go over and help them out and see if there's different ways that they can uh, be helped through this you know this quarantine because we're all in it together so we're trying to we're trying to you know help each other out and just one last thing in this book that I wanted to point out to you is, is the scene where they drive around in the car, right? And this scene is probably my favorite scene in the book because it was very personal to me. My daughter Emily came to me and she said, Dad, this is about a month into the quarantine. She said, Dad, what if my school blowed down? And I said, well, what do you mean, Emily? She goes, well, I haven't seen it in a while. And that's exactly the way she said it. She said, what if my school blowed down? And I realized that she hasn't been outside our neighborhood in over a month. And she doesn't know anything besides the houses in our neighborhood. What's going on out there? Is her school still there? Is our church still there? And I said to her, I said, Emily, let's go for a ride in the car, right? And so we hopped in the car, Emily, Haley, our other daughter, and I, and we drove around. We drove by our their school. We drove by our church. We actually drove around so much that I got lost. And uh, we just wanted to see things. We wanted to see people. We wanted to see trees. We wanted to see buildings. And we wanted to see other cars. And that was that really helped her to really understand, okay, things are still going on out there. And we can, you know, I, I can feel better about things now, you know. And, and so that made her feel a lot better. So these are all just different ways. We're all in this together. Like that's why we titled the book Together, because we're all doing things to try to help each other out. And so... Uh, I just want everybody to know that uh, I'm thinking about everybody. I, I, I want everybody to really uh, feel comfortable during this time um, to, to really help out each other. People are looking for help during these times. So uh, with that being said, thank you for tuning in. Um, tonight I'm doing an interview uh, with uh, WSB TV on, the, on our coronavirus book. So look for that uh, coming out soon. And I just want to say to everyone, I just want you to be well, take care of each other, and stay safe. Thank you.